Real light therapy has become very popular in the last 10 years and studies have shown that it can help with things like skin rejuvenation, so firming up the skin, diminishing the appearance of fine lines, wrinkles, helping with breakouts, and also temporary relief of pain, modulating inflammation, and much more. But a lot of people are not doing it right and therefore not seeing results. So here are five common mistakes I see people make when using red light therapy. The first one is using a low power unit. The efficacy of red light therapy depends on the dose of light you're receiving. Now, different tissues in our bodies require different doses of light. For example, skin requires very little light, and so you may see a benefit if you use a low-powered unit. But if you wanted to treat deeper tissue like your joints or muscles, a low-powered unit just will not be helpful because the light is not powerful enough to penetrate deep into tissue. So my recommendation is to get a high-powered unit because then you can adjust the dosage by the distance um, so for example, Lumbox is very powerful. And if, you, if I want a high dosage, I have it close to my joint. If I'm trying to treat my skin, I have it further away so that um, the distance kind of dilutes the dosage, if you, if you see what I mean. So a high powered unit allows you the luxury to actually adjust the dose of light. So you can treat both deep tissue and the skin. Um, whereas if you start with a low powered unit, you're kind of stuck with that low power unit. You can't really increase it to then use it for the tissue. You can really only use it for the skin. The second mistake I see people make is not using enough and not being consistent with it. The benefit from real life therapy is cumulative. So for example, studies have shown that the longer you use it, the more dramatic the reduction in pain. And also with things like hair or skin, you normally don't see a result until two or three months down the line. Number three, is using it too much. So on the flip side, you may not see a benefit if you overdo it and give your tissue too much light. Now there's what's known as the biphasic dose response. And I have another video about this, but there is a sweet spot of real life therapy uh, in terms of dose um, where too much, you don't get a benefit, but too little, you also don't get a benefit. Now, before you panic, it's very unlikely that you'll do yourself serious damage by using too much red light, unlike UV, which can cause quite severe skin damage. Um, but it's just that you may not see as much of a benefit from red light if you overdo it. So a common side effect of too much red light on the skin, for example, is you may see some redness, um, some dryness, but this usually goes away once you stop using the red light. Number four. A lot of people think that using a red light bulb in the lamp is the same. Red light bulbs are incandescent where light radiates in all different directions. In other words, it's scattered. And it's great if you only want to create ambience in the room to help you relax because your eyes are seeing red, which is calming. Um, and it could also help you avoid blue light in the evening. But it's really not useful if you want the light to penetrate into your tissue and body. As I mentioned earlier, the more powerful the light, the deeper the penetration. So if you want things like reducing inflammation, mitochondrial activation, you need uh, an LED based red light therapy at the very least. Um, and in doctor's offices, they often use lasers. And number five mistake is people think infrared sauna is the same as real light therapy. Now there is an overlap and I personally love infrared sauna. I think they're amazing. I love the health benefits of sauna, which comes um, with heating up the body, increasing core temperature to induce a sweat, which has been reduced, uh, associated with reduced cardiovascular risk, dementia risk. But red light therapy actually relies on light and not heat. So you, when, you're actually, when you're trying to do red light therapy, it's actually best not to heat your body. And a lot of people um, use the red light panel in the sauna, which I personally don't love because I, I like using red light therapy away from infrared sauna where I'm actually heating up the body. The reason why I created Loombox is because I couldn't find a portable red light therapy unit like this on the market that offered high irradiance and power to the level I was happy with. 
Um, and if you watch my other videos, you'll realize that the efficacy of red light therapy devices actually depends on the dose of light the device can deliver. And if your device is not powerful enough, then you're not going to be able to get the same benefits. And the reason why I wanted this powerful device is because you can actually manipulate the power with the distance. The further away your device is, the um, less powerful it is, and the closer it is to your body, the more powerful it is. So it's much better to have a device that had high power because then you can manipulate the dosage of light by adjusting distance. And I will teach you how to do this um, in our Kickstarter guide when you purchase a Loom box. Now, what's so special about Loom box is that it has both a red light and near infrared light mode. So each bulb can deliver both red light at 660 nanometers and near infrared light at 850 nanometers. Um, but you can toggle between the two. You can choose either just red, just near infrared, or you can bo have both. Now, what's the difference between the two? Well, red light is better for skin because red light doesn't penetrate as deeply into the tissue. So this is better for skin. But if you want light to penetrate into tissue, if you want to treat something like your joint or your muscles, then you want the near infrared light mode. So this is light you can barely see, but it penetrates deeper into the tissues. If you want to treat your joints, that's the, that's what you want. Now, the loom box um, will shut off by itself after 12 minutes of use and you can switch it back on again if you want to use it again after two minutes of cooling down time and i put it in deliberately because there is what's known as the biphasic dose response to red light therapy meaning too little and you don't get an effect but too much you also don't see a benefit now, it's, red light therapy is pretty safe, so it's actually quite difficult to get too much light. And the commonest side effects I see of too much red light is maybe a little bit headache, feeling a little fatigued, or if you're using it on your skin and you've got too much, then you might see some redness or dryness of the skin, which goes away after you stop using red light therapy. But it's really difficult to overdo um, a portable red light therapy like this, where it causes um, damage, which you too much UV light can definitely do. And that's why we need to put on sunscreen. But you don't really need to use sunscreen when you use red light therapy because it doesn't have UV. Loombox is powerful and I've tested the irradiance in a third party lab and it's been shown to have irradiance of over 100 milliwatts per centimeters. Also, I've tested it for EMF as well in a third party lab and also safety standards. So you can be assured that this is the highest quality red light therapy device.